Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I apologize for not posting for so long but I will tell you more about it later when I'm ready to talk about it. So in this video I'll be talking about the aerospace engineering curriculum which is what you would study exactly if you go into an aerospace engineering program. This video is going to be long but if you're interested in specific subjects you can see in the description of the video the timeline where you can click on the specific time and just see that subject and if you find this video useful in any way please click that like button and if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe to see next videos so i'm going to be showing you my syllabi from the time when i was studying in undergrad and let me get to the computer to do that all right, so let's go down this rabbit hole of memories. So first of all, let me show you my transcript. Okay, so this was my transcript, the official transcript from my university. And I received it in 2016 because I graduated with master's. But today I just want to talk about my undergrad because if you apply to an aerospace engineering program, you should probably know what classes you would take, and what topics you would study and if you like it after that maybe you'll go to masters all right so this is my transcript oops i think oh whew, it doesn't have my year of birth great all right so this was it's very complicated okay so degree awarded may 2013 <laughs> that was a long time ago all right undergrad so let's start with spring 2010 so why did i start studying in spring is another story but basically i did not have enough time to apply to the university because i did not know the rules that you have to apply a year before your actual planned date and my english courses or like the courses to improve my english were in 20, no, 2009 from January till August. So if I wanted to study at the university in September, I would have to have had applied in the fall or like November 2008. So if I wanted to start school in September 2009, I would have to apply to the university in November 2008. But I, I barely got my scholarship in 20, 2008. So when I finished my English courses, I didn't like I had one month, so I, obviously I could not apply to the university. So I applied later. And actually I was studying at Kazakh British Technical University in Almaty before. So I could only transfer one class. I don't know why they put 16 hours, but I was only able to transfer my calculus uh, score because I took an AP test after I got to the university in winter. All right, so I hope everything is clear by now. So I got accepted in fall of 2009 and went to the university in 2010. So that was a whole new experience for me because it was the first time I ever took a flight by myself. I never traveled by plane before so everything was new and <laughs> I'm very grateful for this experience. Okay so let's start talking on the topic now. So in my first semester which was actually the second semester for usual students I took chemistry. It was required and it had a lab, but we'll not talk about it here because if you go into any engineering program, you have to take these classes. So I'm not going to show you the syllabi or anything about this because it's just easy classes, basically like high school. Um, calculus 1, uh, introductory matrix theory. I actually don't remember. I remember taking these two classes but I thought they were in different semesters, but they actually were in the same semester. <laughs> so matrix theory is also easy. You just talk about how to keep matrices, why, why are they used 
in math and how will they help you in the future. So you study the determinant, um, what else, like row reduction, <laughs> echelon forms, and just general math stuff like that. Um, calculus 2, oh yeah, yeah, I remember. So calculus 1, I tested out. So I got, ah, I remember there were like nine students during the test. And when I came to this building to see the roster of who passed, and I was the only one. <laughs> that was funny. All right, so calculus 2 was my favorite subject. And I'm not going to tell you why. <laughs> Sorry, it's personal. So then we had university, uh, university physics mechanics. It was also pretty easy. The professors in physics department were great. The classes were always fun. Uh, with every topic, they showed us experiments during the class, and then we always laughed. Um, also, we used clickers to have tests during the class and show results on the board right away or on the screen. Uh, so it was pretty easy, as you can see with my grade. Uh, it was just about the motion of objects, like easy topics like 80 squared divided by 2 plus VT, formulas like that. So just basic motion in 2D. Uh, and the next class I had to take was the principles of composition. And this was a difficult one for me because I never wrote in English before. Uh, that much. They told us we have to write a paper which has 5,000 words or something. So I was going to office hours like crazy and the professor knew me very well. All right, now we move on to fall 2010 and you can, so in the US program you can take some uh, electives or classes which are not necessarily for your degree but something you are interested in and there is a pool of classes that you can select so I selected media money and power because at the time I was I was I considered myself anti-government type person <laughs> you know I don't know how to explain it the reason I took this class is because I did not consider myself fitting into the society and at the time I thought that whoever has, that media serves the powerful people and that corporations rule the world and so on, right? And actually it was pretty interesting. Uh, then we had Calculus 3, which is also something all engineering students had to take, so I'm not going to talk about it. But basically it was about triple integrals and so on. and. The professor was, I guess, good, but he did not care about students at all. Like, if you ask him a question, he is very uh, sarcastic about it. So I did not understand the, the topics up until uh, final exam. And then I decided that I cannot just get a bad grade. So I studied for the exam. And... I got a good grade because I finally understood everything. It was not that difficult. I just wanted to show the professor that even though he's a bad professor, he does not care about students, he wants everyone to fail, I still got an A. And he remembered me because after that, the next semester, I think I had to meet him for some questions and he remembered me. <laughs> so always show off to, to bad professors that you can actually... Um, understand the material and you can get it on your own just show your your work all right next engineering materials so this is when we actually start going into aerospace more so let me show you the syllabus uh, I don't remember all right so I actually have a whole folder in my hard drive which is called UIUC and I have two folders for undergrad and grad. And here's all the class, all the semesters I had. And you see here, I have folders for classes, but don't get fooled because sometimes they have no stuff in it. Well, this one has, but sometimes it has very little. Okay, uh, this is not a good example, but yeah. So in my first semester, I was very diligent I downloaded everything that was available on the, 
on the website of the class, but then you will see it gets worse. All right, so fall 2010, engineering materials. Let's see here. So let's find a syllabus. Okay, I, I did not download a syllabus before during the class, but let me show you what the syllabus looks like now, last year. So over here, well, obviously I had a different professor and actually I don't remember this class at all. <laughs> Because let let's let me show you the topics. Okay, so bonding is just about chemistry. So engineering materials was more about chemistry, uh, bonding between uh, atoms and so on, crystallography, talking about the crystal structures and everything. Polymers is the long molecules and why we use them in aerospace. Well, not necessarily aerospace. Uh, this class was for all engineering disciplines. It was a huge lecture hall. Uh, what else? Defects, um, diffusion. I remember it's about putting different molecules in the atom structure of uh, some element, some material. Phase diagrams, it was easy. It's about like uh, how Ice becomes water, becomes uh, steam, and you just do some calculations. Uh, kinetics, I don't actually remember that. <laughs> Mechanical properties was about stress and strain, what happens when you like hit the material and so on. Failure is when, when the material fails, so it breaks down. And this was very general, but later in the aerospace structures, we talked about fatigue and so on. I'll tell you more about it later. Uh, nanomaterials, I don't actually remember that. Electrical properties is like PN junctions, more, more like what happens to materials and how they conduct electricity. Okay, composites, very easy, and thermal properties. And then we talk more about design, but I don't remember a lot of things. All right, so basically this was this would be what you study in uh, materials, engineering materials. And if you are into that, you will like the, the class that, I, that we had later. Okay, so physics 2012, which is electricity and magnetism. And we still had the same professors as before. So it was pretty interesting and entertaining and easy. <laughs> as you can see, it's my grade. And I'm not really shy showing you my grades because it was in the past like it doesn't matter anymore and another class that i could take an elective for was spanish and uh, honestly i cannot speak spanish now i don't remember anything well i i remember maybe like 100 200 words but i cannot talk yet so now i'm taking spanish again just to start talking a little bit Okay, so introduction to statics, that was uh, one of the more difficult courses and also I had to show the professor that I can do this because it was very difficult. Let me show you the syllabi, syllabus. Okay. So PAM 210 and uh, if you notice here I have a lot of folders for textbooks which I downloaded at the time so but don't do the same okay you need to go to the library and is as in my previous video just scan it that way you want it won't be copyrighted copyright issue you won't have copyright issues so let's open a textbook because if you noticed I did not have the syllabus there because everything was on the board we only solved problems from the textbook all right, so introduction. And in statics, you talk about static objects, which are just standing in one place. And you start with an introduction into vectors, forces, equilibriums, first law, Newton's laws, and free body diagrams. And then you move on to 3D. So this was about 2D diagrams when you have like a, a box sitting on the table and you have to analyze it. 
Now, later, you go into 3D, but it was not really difficult. It was just about vectors again, adding forces and so on. And this is where it gets difficult. Let's start talking about rigid bodies. And let's see what we have. Vector products, uh, moment of a force about a point. Uh, moments are pointing in... Okay, let me just... If I start explaining everything, we will take an hour in our video. So this is just for you to know what is studied during a statics class. So couple, couples, this means just two forces acting in, uh, on the body in the opposite ways. Well, in this... Okay, so they act uh, uh, by creating a rotational moment. Uh, that was that topic, mostly. Uh, then equilibrium of rigid bodies. It's about free body diagrams. And in order to analyze it, you have to talk about centers of gravity and centers of mass. And there's a few ways to calculate it uh, using first moments and areas and lines and integration. And this one, I don't remember. I don't even remember how to pronounce it. And also it's about loads on beams, but it was later. Okay, so analysis of structures. Oh, we talk about trusses, and trusses is something you can see in a bridge. A, a lot of structures like this, uh, and they are used in, in such a way that they decrease the loads on the structure, optimizing the distribution of the forces uh, and loads so that the structure lasts longer. And frames and, and machines, I actually don't remember. <laughs> All right, I don't remember that we studied it. Uh, forces and beams and cables. This was a more more difficult topic because you you talk about if you cut a beam, then on the border you would have a force and a moment acting on it, and you have to calculate it using integration and differentiation. So this was pretty difficult topic. And cables is just, uh, you use ten the tension force. All right, friction is, I don't remember it. Oh, yeah, we talked about friction in bearings and wheels and belts. But friction is just a force that opposes the motion. So it was not that bad of a topic. But this was the worst. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. Uh, if you read the textbook, you'll understand it, but you will probably not remember all these formulas uh, after several years, <laughs> unless you are working in that. So moments of inertia of areas, you will only understand it if you study topics before it. So it was just finding the moments of inertia of a body and analyzing it. And method of virtual work is... So this one was about imagining that a body moved this much and how much energy would it need to make that motion. So that's why you talk about potential energy as well. Alright, so this was what we studied in statics and what you would probably study in statics. So maybe I need to do another video on how to see the curriculum of an aerospace program in a university that you're interested in. Alright, so now let's move on. I have no idea how much time I'm spending on each syllabus. Alright, so that was the end of fall 2010. All right, move on to spring 2011. Here it was my uh, second semester of second year, and this is actually when uh, aerospace classes start. So let's talk about A22, aerospace flight mechanics, but it was pretty easy. So let's go to my folder. And another tip for you in the future, just save everything in your class all the lectures and everything because oh I think I saved them but in some classes you will see later I did not save anything <laughs> all right oh I have syllabus 
Okay, and I even remember that person who taught it. He was pretty good. All right, so let's talk about. I don't remember teaching assistant at all. <laughs> so let's talk about topics. Oh, there's nothing here. All right, so that's just one page. Orbital mechanics, rocket propulsion, but it was basic stuff. The, the um, topics that I'm actually posting here on YouTube, just introductory stuff. Uh, dynamics and control applied to spacecraft design, a little bit of aerodynamics, maneuvering, stability, and flight performance. You see that this is a textbook by John Anderson again, but it's an easier one, introduction to flight. It's not aerodynamics yet. Oh, here. I think this is the topics. Yes. So first we talked about MATLAB. We learned how to use it, how to program in it. Um, this was actually interesting. This was the first time I was introduced to solving nonlinear equations using approximations. And I, I think I liked it. Uh, then ODEs. But remember, we had a class in differential equations. So we, I already knew some stuff about it and how to solve them. Now optimization, um, I don't remember that much about it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> all right. Mm. Then we talked about astrodynamics, Kepler's laws, Newton's laws, very easy. Uh, this wave equation, how to derive it. A, oh, it's actually the escape velocity from Earth and circular velocity in the orbit of Earth. Then we talked about orbit transfers a little bit. Uh, this one is optimal, Hohmann transfer. Uh, we talked about different or orbital transfers and how much delta V you need to do that. And uh, some simple problems about calculating the mission uh, orbit or like how much fuel you need and so on. Um, okay, rocket propulsion, rocket equation, most important thing, staging, and I will talk about it in my on my channel as well because this stuff is introductory, it's easy to understand. And we talked about spacecraft design, <laughs> as you can see here, but I don't remember anything from there. <laughs> Sorry. Is there more? Oh yeah, there's more. And then we talked about aeronautics. Uh, and as you can see, this is something that we talk in our class. The wings, the generation of lift, uh, laminar flow, which means it's not turbulent, drag. Uh, and you see, we'll, we'll talk about all these topics on, on my channel. So it's like second year of the aerospace program because then it gets more difficult um, airplane maneuvers oh this was an interesting topic because we solved actual problems uh, equations of motion uh, it's very theoretical thrust required for level flight and stability and control but we did not solve a lot of problems here uh, I remember this one though, locating CG for a real airplane. Alright, so this is what you study in Introduction to Flight. Ah, aerospace flight mechanics, but I, I called it just like Introduction to Flight because it was very basic and easy. And then you see Geography of Developing Countries. This was uh, one of the best classes I had, but it was um, an elective for humanities or social studies. I don't remember. So we'll not talk about it here because this is for aerospace, right? Oh yeah, here introduction to differential equations. That's when we had it. This is just math, so I'm not going to talk more about it. Now thermodynamics is important for aerospace, so let's talk briefly about it. Let me just show you that I have very little stuff here in differential equations. Just homework one. And actually, I also, when I took the class and I did not understand something, 
I downloaded a bunch of additional materials to try to understand the topic. Okay, so here we have a syllabus. And I remember our professor, she was a um, female professor. And she explained really well. And what I remember from this course, just one thing I remember is the law of thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics is that you go you can only go from hotter body to you can only radiate energy from hotter to colder if you want to go from colder to warmer like uh, in a fridge you would always need an input of energy from the motor or somewhere else so it it never works that way naturally in nature it's always from warm to colder and it goes to equilibrium all right, uh, properties of pure substances. That was about that was talking about ideal gases and the formulas for to, to solve them. Uh, first law analysis on control volume. You should know by now what a control volume is, and we talked about thermodynamics of the control volume. Next, we talked about Carnot cycle, and to be honest, I don't. I remember the picture of the cycle. So basically, you keep pre it's like you keep pressure constant you heat it up and then it, it expands it does work then it reduces the heat so it goes down so it's like a closed loop cycle and what i remember about entropy so this is the second law of thermodynamics and what i remember about entropy is that entropy always tries to increase itself so for example in your room the clothes are never, or the stuff in your room, is never going to try to be in order. In our universe, everything tries to get out of order. So we need to apply work, like physically put stuff away, in order to keep order. Otherwise, everything just tends to go to chaos. That's a principle for entropy. Um, Two-phase states, oh, and this is... Um, those phases that we talked about in materials. But now it's about gases more. Uh, and actually, I don't remember this, more of your diagrams. I think it's when you have um, alpha and beta. So you have two substances in one, and if you increase the percentage of one substance in, in another, it's going to change the properties of that substance. Okay, and then we talked about power systems and efficiencies. It was more about uh, like engines, well, not engines, but about cycles and how much power we get. So thermodynamics was not bad. Oh, let me check my grade. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, I got A plus. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's why it was easy. She was a good professor. Mm, now, university physics, thermal physics. And this one, I actually, it was similar to thermodynamics because it was about ideal gases as well and the transfer of heat. But I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> and introductory dynamics, you see it's 10 to 12. It comes after 10 to 10. So if, it, if in 10 to 10 we talk about static bodies, now here we talk about dynamics. But this class was more interesting than uh, statics because we had a different professor and he had a completely different approach to teaching. If in statics we had just regular blackboard explanation, uh, almost no use of textbook, no use of uh, PowerPoints or anything like that. In dynamics, it was so cool. We had a whole website with a homework that you had to solve and put answers in the boxes and the homework was pretty funny let me try to find something all right i got my 10 to 12 syllabus and i remember the professor i don't remember his name actually <laughs> uh, all right so this is a text did i talk about this textbook in my previous video i don't remember I think I only talked about aerospace uh, classes. So 
So let's see what we did do during that class. Oh, so here, cor course description. Uh, you talk about laws of conservation of momentum and energy and motion of rigid bodies. And it was pretty interesting because they had a fun structure, not structure, fun, mm, fun way of teaching the class. Try to find something interesting. You see here, I don't have all the lectures. So in the lecture, first we talked about vectors, uh, 3D space, then we moved on to matrices. Oh, and actually this professor was writing, so he was writing on this tool that transforms his writing onto the slide right away. And let's talk about lecture four, just like rectilinear motion, which is straight. So this was basically like physics before, but it had more topics. So it, they become more difficult with every lecture. And after every lecture, there was a homework to talk about. So you study cylindrical coordinates, and after that, you have to solve this problem uh, of something rotating on top of it, and so on. All right, and lecture 11, let's see what it was about. Oh, it was about friction. And I don't have more lectures, but you see that these topics are not that difficult. It was uh, something we got already introduced to in physics or in 10 to 10. But in homework, they gave us fun problems. Okay, so that was the end of spring 2011. Now it's fall 2011. And here you see we, I have three classes in aerospace department. A, A, A. All right, this is incompressible flow. And this is what aerodynamics is about. And it's called incompressible, remember? Because the velocities are slower, so we don't take into account the compressibility of air. So let me try to show you the syllabus. You see here, I don't even have the third class that I'm going to talk about. And I don't have a syllabus here. But let's look at this project. So this is what our final project was, if you see by the date. Uh, classes start in August, but end in, at the end of uh, December. Well, not before, like the first week of December, that's when classes end. But you still have to have final exams before that, so that's why it was due this date. And you see, it was the project was about analyzing the airfoil, and you see that you need to use MATLAB here. So engineers use MATLAB a lot because it's an easy to program language. It, it is high level. And in order to analyze the airflow, you have to program the equations into the code. You see all the conditions here. And they told us to divide this airflow. I think they gave us the model in MATLAB, like all of these points. But then we had to apply those rules of airflow geometry and so on to analyze it. And we'll talk about it in on my YouTube channel. We'll talk more about analyzing airfoils and calculating it. So you can get an idea of what we talked about during that class. But as you can see, it was not my favorite because my final exam, I got stuck. I don't know why they, he gave us such a difficult problem during final exam that it was something I was not prepared for. Okay, now mechanics of aerospace structures. And I told you in, in the previous video that it's not one of my favorite subjects because um, I'm not a fan of structure. I know it's very important and it's fun to do the tests, to test the structure that you built but the theory is difficult and you see my grade <laughs> that was the first time i got a c all right let's talk about the syllabus and it's right here and you see i don't have anything i don't know why because the professor unfortunately he passed away um 
I learned it a few years ago. But let's look at the homework, at least to give you an idea of the topics. So you see we have some stress calculations and it's about stress and strain curves, calculating the actual numbers for that and so on, using the properties of the material. So it's just something I don't enjoy. <laughs> All right, uh, then in spring, sorry, we're talking about fall. So in fall 2011, uh, we talked about aerospace dynamical systems and you see I don't have a folder here. It's because the professor in that class, he only used notes on the board so we didn't even have a textbook in the class. So we wrote everything in the notebook and the exam was based on that. And this class was also when I was not happy with how I understood the topics. So before the exam, I understood everything and I showed the professor that I'm capable of doing it. So my final exam had a good grade. That's why I got a good enough grade at the end. So then there was two there were two EC classes which stands for electrical and computer engineering department so each class you can see which department it comes from it was just about elect electricity and electronic circuits it was a bit more complicated than the electricity that you talk about in high school but it was still not that bad it was about the theorems and how the it was about the theorems when you analyze the circuits, also about diodes, um, what, what is it called, semiconductors, and so on. So if you just pay attention during class, I think you'll be fine. And uh, and the lab was just to understand the topics better. So lab was just physically doing the experiments. And then there was statistics and probability. And it was an amazing class. I think you can see by my grade which classes I liked and which ones I didn't. And we had a Russian professor who lived in the US for a long time, but he was so funny. Like when students ask stupid questions, he would make fun of them. And I know it's bad, but even when I asked questions, he made fun of me, but it was still funny. He was so humorous. And I, I, w I was going to this class, I was always waiting for this class. <laughs> and I'm not that good at statistics and probability, but in his class I understood it, finally. Alright, let's move on to spring 2012. I hope my sound is not lagging, because I feel like my laptop is lagging. So here, it was already junior year, second semester. So you might notice that everything is aerospace and I only had one class about uh, Latin America but it was an elective humanities or social sciences. So it doesn't matter for our video. So compressible flow. And I remember the professor. He was amazing. He explained so well. That's what I strive for. So let's see the syllabus. You see I don't have a lot of stuff. <laughs> because it was also mostly on the board and just you copy from the board. So you didn't really use a textbook except for solving uh, homework because homework was assigned from the textbook. So course outline. Uh, we talked about governing equations for fluids and thermodynamics. So this stuff we already learned before kind of in different classes so it was just a review then we talked about this stuff for gases and remember it was already in the thermodynamics course so, so it was a review all right now we talk about normal shock waves and they happen when we have velocity of airflow higher than Mach 1 well uh, on the transition state and after that so we talked about all the equations to analyze shock waves. So it was pretty cool. There, there's a lot of theory behind it. And we solved problems about it. We divided the whole um, space into two 
segments, one before the shock wave and before the shock wave and one after it. And it has different properties. And sometimes it has a few shock waves, one after another, and you have to keep track of that and there's different pressures, temperatures, but you have formulas to analyze it. Okay, so this was just, uh, I don't remember what it was about. <laughs> and after that, we talked about flow with area change. This is what we talked about a little bit in our control volume lecture, because when you go from small area to big area, the properties of the flow change. And here we have a lot of like P naught, which is a static pressure, and we had a nozzle that is converging diverging. That's when you have a star in the middle, the supersonic wind tunnel. Oh yeah, so when when you have shock waves, it means you have a supersonic flow, which was cool. I don't know why I like this class. Uh, I guess because we talked about actual real theory behind what happens. Because in the incompressible flow, we assume it's incompressible, but in reality, it's, it's always compressible. So I like to analyze stuff which is real. All right, flow is friction, and I don't, I don't remember much about it, <laughs> sorry. Um, flow is heat transfer. This one I remember. It's when you have heat transfer to the pipe from the outside. And it also changes the properties of air. And by properties, I mean pressure and temperature and viscosity and so on. And then we talk about oblique shock waves. So usually shock waves are round like this. And they're called bow shock waves. And oblique shock waves are like straight lines like that. And they usually happen for very high velocities of air. And they have their own formulas to analyze them. And this one I actually don't remember. Crandall Meyer expansion. I remember something like a plane wall, but not much. So linearized compressible flow. This is when you can't analyze it um, fully. So you assume this condition. How to linearize the equations. Oops. So which assumptions you which assumptions you make to linearize the equations and make them simpler. And that was it for compressible flow. All right, then air, applied aerospace structures. You see I have a not that good grade again, but it was easier than before. It was about analyzing beams and so on. And you see I don't have that much here. So let me try to do this because it's very oh it's too small all right and there's not really an outline by topics but let's look here uh, so stress and strain which was already covered in previous classes it was pretty easy we talked about beam theories including thin walled beams torsion and two axis bending so that was uh, something i don't like to analyze but this professor was explaining it very well so I understood it and you just study for exams and pass the, this class even though it's not your favorite I mean it's not my favorite okay next 353 is control systems and remember I don't know how I got an A but remember I talked about um, that textbook in my video before and control systems are about analyzing closed loops and how the signals go to, like how you control some properties of the system. And you see I don't have much here, but let's just look at homeworks for example. And it had, I remember talking about Laplace transforms, and mostly it was about MATLAB, as you can see here, homework was all programming. Um, oh yeah, we talked about different simple functions at first, like a step function. Um, and you see this is what happens when you, for example, 
when you have a mass on the spring and then you pull it, but you control the spring, this is what can happen. So the mass goes down and then goes to equilibrium. So this class was about controlling stuff like that. Also, it applies to, airs, uh, to airplane wings and so on. All right. So we, I used knowledge from this class in the next semester. We talked about the root locus of different systems. And the systems are usually represented by a function with a formula. But in MATLAB, you can represent it as numerator and denominator and use the transform function from MATLAB to analyze the problem. And these things are called poles, and some of them are called roots because uh, poles make it unstable and roots make it stable. But I'm not going to go into much detail here because you'll study it. Even if you go if you go into electrical and computer engineering, you'll probably need it. And if you go into dynamical systems, if you go into mechanical engineering, you'll definitely study it. Uh, let's see what's here. So yeah, it's just analyzing how to move these uh, poles and roots to make a system stable. Then we had numerical methods, which was pretty interesting, is when you have a difficult equation and you cannot solve it, you divide your whole, um, you cannot solve it algebraically, you divide the whole space into a lot of points and you try to solve that equation numerically, which means not uh, exactly, but very close to exact roots. So uh, you see, I don't, ha I don't really have a syllabus here. Oh yeah, I do have a syllabus. All right, let's look at the syllabus. So in this class, as you can see, computational methods or numerical methods is, is mostly about MATLAB. So all homework was in MATLAB. It was about programming. And this guy is amazing. Uh, some people did not like him as a professor, but I think he explains super well. Uh, let's see. So it's just like introduction. Okay, computational analysis. Errors, obviously. We need to talk about it. Interpolation. That's when you find a point if you know two points. It, it, that's when you find a middle point or you know two points and you want to interpo interpolate further. So this was just like uh, mathematical stuff. After that, we moved to numerical solutions. And you had to use matrices, uh, direct and iterative methods. It was pretty interesting. I like iterative methods a lot. And then we talked about finite difference method. Actually, I had another class that's called finite element analysis. But where did it go? I do not have anything about it. Oh, no, I had it, I had it during graduate, so graduate school, so that's why. OK, so finite difference method is about also finding solutions, but using Taylor series and analyzing different types of equations, uh, elliptic, parabolic, hyperbolic, and boundary conditions are pretty fun as well. And then we have the final element method. That's when you use, you can use some software for that, but we did the theory and we solved these problems in, we programmed, we programmed them in MATLAB. But basically, the whole class is about how to solve equations, how to approximate them using numerical methods. So let's move on to fall 2012. In fall, I took a lot of classes because I wanted to graduate in May. Because I started in spring, I was supposed to graduate in December, but I did not want to do that. Because in junior year, we already started having classes, mostly the same people in a group. So, for example, the compressible flow, the aerospace structures, uh, we had the same class, like the same people in a class. So I, I got to know the, the people 
and we solved homework together and so on. So I wanted to graduate with everybody. So here I took seven classes, I think, and I needed to get a permission from a dean, but they saw my previous GPA, so they said, okay, and, <laughs> okay, let's talk about it. So first class was aerospace propulsion, um, but I don't remember in my folder, for some reason, I have a different syllabus from a person in 2009, you see? But that that was 2012. So basically I don't have a syllabus here. But let's see if all, maybe I downloaded some folder from someone. Uh, it's also from 2009. Oh, seven, okay. I trained for midterms. Uh, yeah, I don't have an, anything really. Oh, this one, this one. Okay, fall 2012. Oh, that's when we had this class when it was Halloween day. So a lot of people showed up wearing Halloween costumes. So I liked this course because it was about propulsion. And you see here, we have, uh, we analyzed jets, uh, how much thrust we can get, what happens in, what are the parts of the jet engine and what happens in all of those sections of the engine. Uh, we analyzed how much fuel you need uh, and talked about different types of jets, ramjets, turbojets, turbofans, turboprops, different engines. So let's see if we had um, an outline of topics. No. Yeah, two pages only. Yeah, I guess that's all you can know from here. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty interesting because it was real. We analyzed actual aircraft. Okay, next, aerospace system design. This is this was the first semester of the last year, and this course was called senior design because it's a senior year and we had a project to do during that year. This is when we could divide into an aero direction talking about uh, aircraft and UAVs, and uh, space direction, which is about satellites and so on. So the first semester, it was introductory, and we worked in a design program, like a CAD program, which was called PRO-E at the time. I think now it's called CREO, or CREO. Um, and here you can see I had some assignments, which I did there. Um, they gave us tutorials, obviously, but also it was about a research paper and we could choose our topic, I think. And I talked about communications, deep space communications, but generally it's a part. So in systems design, we talked about how when you create some, some project or some new system in aerospace, you have to divide your team into subgroups. So some people would be uh, responsible for actual design, some people would calculate the materials that you need and how much it would cost, some people would calculate the engines, some some people would choose the power, sorry, well, engines and power depends, right? Because in space you need solar cells or some other type of um, systems to give you power. And if you talk about aero, it's it's all about engines, right? And you have people that are responsible for navigation, people who are responsible for communications, and I mean communications between the system and Earth, right? So yeah, the first semester was pretty easy for that. But our actual project, I'll talk about it when we talk about the next semester. But then we had the aerospace and propulsion lab, and it was about sorry aerodynamics and propulsion lab. Okay, I'm getting tired. <laughs> I think it's more than one hour already. I'm talking. I will try to reduce. Okay, so it was four sixty, and it was just about going to the lab, doing experiments, and we we'll actually have a final report. I remember my teammates. But I have I don't remember going to the lab and actually measuring all of this. 
look at and look at all of this. We measured everything here, and I don't remember how much time we spent and how we calculated it. Yeah, so there was a wind tunnel lab. Sorry, wind. Okay, yeah, there was a lab underground of the building where we had the aerospace department. But also there are different labs on campus, but only grad students could work there. So we could not even go there, I think. Yeah, people needed permission to enter it because it was a top class um, lab. So we worked with some old wind tunnel and we put our airflow or some object and analyze it. But that was the final report. And during the class, we just went to lab every week and did whatever we were told to analyze what happens and to to make a conclusion about what happens. All right, now there was 483, which is decision algorithms. And it was my favorite class. I did not know, like when I registered for it, I did not know what it would be about, but it was actually about quadcopters or quadrocopters or UAV, like basically UAVs with rotors with propellers and we had to control them and we had some interesting tasks but obviously at first we studied the theory the matrices and vectors you see here I don't have a lot of stuff because this professor was also more blackboard and notes guy and he did not even have uh, like um, his notes to write on the board he would just come to class and talk to us and he remembered everybody's name. It was amazing. Like, I wish all professors were like that. And the tasks after that in the lab were super interesting. Like, you, we had to avoid the obstacles. We had to program the quadrocopter to fly at specific heights and avoid the obstacles. Or we had to make sure it flies and stops where it sees a coin picks it up and goes back to home base. So it was super fun. And I can't really show you a lot of things because this class did not have a syllabus. But let me show you homework maybe, what we had to do. So homework one was just a theory because um, it's just the, the beginning of class. And I don't have, ah, this was also, you know how there was code sharing in flights? When you have one airline with a one number flight and another airline with a different number flight, this was the same here with classes because the, the professor was from the electronics department, electronic, sorry, electrical and computer engineering department. So we just talked about transformations, matrices, vectors, and so on. But it was pretty easy if you pay attention in class. Okay, next, <laughs> astronomy four, 406. And I had to take this class because I had to take a technical elective. And technical electives were only 300, sorry, it was 400 or 500 level. And everything else sounded so difficult to me because one of them was about aerodynamics but in more detail. And I already don't enjoy aerodynamics that much so I did not want to take a more difficult class on that and another class was about TAM so TAM stands for uh, theoretical and applied mechanics oh yeah uh, about mechanics and I did not enjoy that class either so I had very few options for my technical elective because I'm taking a lot of classes and these times are fixed because they are required classes. So I could only fit a class that, that was held during that time that I had a space. So I was limited in my choice. So I took this class because I thought, oh, astronomy is interesting. But it was a 400 level. And let me tell you, it was terrible, as you can see with, by my grade. <laughs> Because you need to know all the previous classes. You need to know astronomy 100 level, 200, 300. And I took it without preparation. Maybe it was not the best luck because the professor was also 
weird. Let me show you his slides. So in his lectures, he never had any text. Like, let me show you. So, okay. So first we discussed some um, discoveries, recent discoveries in the topic. Okay, it was fun. All right, this is something he explained. But later, he just it's just a, lot, a bunch of pictures in his slides. So look at it. So just pictures and pictures. And obviously he talks about them during class. But when I want to study and review after class, before I go to next class, I don't remember anything that he talked about. So it's just a bunch of pictures and nobody has um, that good of a memory to memorize everything. And he did not have slides before class, so I could print it and put my notes next to it. But you see it has no formulas. And it has some um, topics, but if you don't know anything about galaxies in the first place, you can't really understand it. So basically, I could not understand the slides when I got home. So I tried to obviously read the textbook, and I think it was somewhere. I had a textbook. Oh, this one. I found it online, I think. But still, it was very difficult, and I could not memorize formulas, because when I memorize formulas, I have to understand where it comes from. I cannot just like study by heart without understanding it. So it was a very bad class. Uh, my advice to you, don't take uh, high-level classes without knowing anything about low-level classes. So it's like the same as taking the... For example, propulsion without knowing integrals, without knowing differentiation, and so on. Obviously, I would have a hard time there. Uh, and at first, I thought it was a good class. But it was, it's actually, astronomy is super complicated. It's not just talking about, oh, how much distance we have until the galaxy. It's very complicated. Okay, and... I took two humanities classes on social sciences, I don't remember. Uh, this, one, this one's pretty easy. And I took this one because I'm from Eurasia. And I thought it would be easier for me to study. Because I already have so many classes to study. So I, I just wanted something easy. So that's why I took music and Eurasia. Because they were easy for me. But in this class, we had to write a lot and read a lot. And I sometimes I did not have time to read a lot. And I, I got a bad grade. But it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's all in the past. And it's not my technical class. So now let's move on to the last semester of my undergrad. It was the best time. <laughs> I don't know. I just love the year of 2013. So... You see here, I have again four aerospace classes because it was already senior year and you have to take very focused classes. So let's talk about spacecraft attitude control. This is, a, this is actually the topic that interests me more about controlling, st controlling satellites or spacecraft or aircraft because in the previous one, in decision algorithms, uh, it was interesting because we talked about uh, controlling the quadcopter and in spring we talked about controlling the satellite attitude which means the orientation basically and you see here I don't have a lot of stuff again and you see that we had a lot of MATLAB almost oh this was just homework 2 but let's see homework 4 so you see quaternions so this class was basically about oh this was not from the class just studying how you can represent the attitude of a spacecraft and how to send a signal to do that and why would it turn a specific way. So that's what it, this class was about. And in the exam, it was fun because um, nobody could solve it and I solved it and I got an A. I got a better grade because of that. Because I thought I would get a B. Uh, next one was electric propulsion, but this was an elective, 
So you could take just rocket propulsion or orbital mechanics. I, I don't know. I At that time, I was a... No, I was not a vegetarian. No, I was a vegetarian. Yeah. And I did not like that rockets spend so much fuel or waste so much fuel and make our planet uh, dirty, so affect the environment. I took electric propulsion because I thought it was the future. And I still think it's the future, but we need way more research about it. Because you see in all of the space movies, they have electric propulsion. The blue round thing that turns on. And remember, I talked about the textbook in my previous video. So that was 335, but I don't have my textbook here. And I don't have a syllabus either. But I have some homework from the class so that you can see what we talked about. <clears throat> so we talked about xenon and ionization states. Need some equation here, <laughs> which I don't remember. And so, yeah, in electric propulsion, we talk about how you can use the ionization of gas in order to propel the spacecraft forward. Mm, so here, we Oh yeah, I remember Hall effect thruster, and this is a lot of theory, a lot of difficult equations, but once you understand it, you can calculate actual numbers. So it was pretty interesting, but I could say that I don't remember a lot, and the reason is that because the professor was, our instructor was the grad student, so he, do, he did not really care about teaching, and the class was boring. So I think the topic is interesting, but it really depends a lot on the person who teaches it. So I was not really motivated to learn it. All right, so AE443 is about systems design, and this is a continuation of systems design one from the previous semester. So it was just senior design of the second semester. And here we actually started working on our project, which is solar based, sorry, space based solar power system. And you see here, I'm responsible for communications command and data handling. But let me show you final report. So this class was all about researching new things and how you can use them in your project but it was all theory and we didn't really have classes it was just project work teamwork we met weekly for one 40 minute class or 50 minute class but each team had 10 minutes to talk with the professor and the ta to discuss some difficulties or something so let me try to find you the report where is it oh yeah so this was our project and I hope it doesn't matter anymore even if I show you because um, it was in the past and I think two teams from our class uh, participated in the AIAA competition so this was actually a competition between student teams a theoretical project which was organized by AIAA and if you are into aerospace you should know what it is American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics and this was a fun project to do but because it was theoretical when you try to find a job after your last year it's difficult to show off your skills because this was theoretical it was instead of the thesis so I did not really think about it as a thesis paper okay Hey guys, I hope you can hear me now and see me because when I was editing that video I realized my screen recording uh, overheated my laptop so it was just black and I, was, I could still hear a sound where I was still showing you what I was talking about and I could not just leave it like that so I have to record it right now just to finish that video so excuse me for my uh, view in the back and so on uh, so I'm in the kitchen where we have a map so let's continue with senior design and I was trying to show you my project which we did in senior year 
as a thesis. Actually, I was trying to tell you that this project was like a thesis for some other universities because it's something that you spend your time on during your last year of undergrad. So let's just sh let me just show you a few things about that project. So we divided our team into a few people. Well, first of all, they gave us the requirements uh, for the project. So any team could participate. It had to be a student team from a U.S. university. And these are the requirements for the project. So we had to come up with solutions to create such a system. Uh, so first of all, it's transmitting one gigawatt of power to Earth, which means 10 to the 9th joules per second, which is in incredible. Uh, full operational by 2040. And the difficult part about this is to send all pieces to space and then assemble them there. Because you can't send one huge system at once because the rocket payload is limited. Uh, now, cost is under 21 billion. Well, let's hope somebody gives that money to create a project like this and obviously safe and reliable. So this is how we intended our design to look and if you read more about it you will probably understand how it's gonna work but not, not all people are into space-based solar power systems so let me just quickly skip through it. So you see mass is in kilograms, 2 million kilograms, <laughs> so we have to assemble it in space. And you see each person in our team was divided, so you see our team was divided into a few people who are responsible for specific parts of the project. It's like in an actual aerospace company. You have structural engineer, so this guy was talking about how to create it, how to assemble it, how to withstand the loads. Uh, then we had another teammate who was responsible for payload, for power, which, so payload power, which means you have to power up your system. And it's all about electronics, how to get solar power to work, and give power to the computer. All right, this is too, I think it's too in-depth for you right now if you're not in the aerospace program yet. Okay, so then we had a person who was responsible for orbital mechanics and propulsion, which means how you can put your space-based solar station into orbit and how we are going to move it in orbit and actually how we're going to put it in space. Uh, all right, this was all his research, uh, orbit transfer, which you will learn and this was me. I was responsible for communications, command, and data handling, which means how we send signals for, to the space station. And what we use to do that, what type of band, and so on. So this was my little project. Okay. Then we had a person who was responsible for power and thermal management. Which, which you need because in space there's no air. You cannot conduct heat from one place to another. It has to be a closed system. Okay, I had to move again because, you know, right now in quarantine everybody's working from home. So we are sharing all the workspaces with my mom. So yeah, I hope it doesn't really matter for you. Let me, I can't finish this video. It's always some problems. Okay, so we had another teammate who was responsible for ground power receiving stations, which means the power that we send from space has had to be received on Earth. And she had to research that and come up with an optimal design. And this is what she came up with. So you see it's all theoretical but at least we have locations of stations. Then we had another person who was responsible for launch systems, which means we had to schedule what we're going, which vehicle we select, and what's the plan to send all of these parts of the space station to space. 
So you get an idea of how detailed this is, right? The timeline as well, how it's going to be constructed, will we use robots or people? <laughs> and finally, our team leader, she was responsible for risk and cost analysis. She had to learn all of these uh, tools to do that, which if you work in an aerospace company, you will probably need to know this anyways, even if you're not a team leader. All right, so I hope this gave you an idea of what you're going to do during your senior year. And obviously we were lucky because the AIAA had a competition like that so we could participate. Okay, so next class is Structures and Control Lab. And I remember this class because the professor was so strict that in his syllabus, so in his syllabus he said that, I don't actually have a syllabus here, but he said that if somebody skips two classes, no matter if you're sick or not, <laughs> he, he will put fail for the whole class. And this class was at 9 a.m. So everybody showed up very tired and sleepy because we had senior design. We spent so much time in the night to finish our homework. And people would just show up and sleep, uh, sign their name that they were at, they were uh, attending the class and everybody was just sleeping or dozing off. It was fun. So you see this, I don't have a lot of material here, but let's look at the final report. And basically the structures lab was about testing the theories that we learned in the structures class, in the aerospace structures the semester before. So here, in our final report, or our final project, we tested a piece of material. I think we were either crashing it or extending it until it breaks. And we applied all the equations, which you unfortunately cannot see here. Uh, maybe I have some other... Okay. Oh, yeah, we have formulas here. Once you study structures, you will understand these equations. So first, every report is based first on theory, and then you test it in the lab, and you see how well the lab experiment correlates with theory. So let's see what we did. I don't think we have pictures. Oh, we do. <laughs> these are old pictures. Oh, this was our tool that either the press, right? It crashes the material or extends it very much. So our material is composite, that's why you see all these layers. And these are our experimental results, but I'm not going to explain you that much right now because without background knowledge you will not understand it. But you can see uh, how the displacement varies with the load. And you see finally it broke. So this is fun to do from one side. And you should see one video from Boeing when they tested the wing for 150% of its actual load. So the wing was bent like this on the side and finally it broke and they just filmed it funny. They filmed this breakage many, uh, in many frames. So when we saw that video, everybody was laughing for some reason, even though it's not funny. Okay, so Structures Lab is about proving that the theory that we learned in the Structures class is correct. And after that, you see I had a contemporary dance and I took it because it was easy. Because you see, I took six classes and I only had to take five classes if I was to graduate as a normal person. But I was trying to catch up to everybody. So I took one more class than necessary. But it was pretty easy. So that's a tip for you in the future. If you want a good grade, take an easy class for an elective for social sciences or human humanities elective because in technical elective it's probably not going to be easy all right and final class global navigation satellite systems 
As we can see by the name, it's about GPS and other navigational systems. And you see this class was from the EC department, Electrical Computer Engineering. And you know it's not my strengths, I don't like electronics and wires and signals. But let's see what I have from that class. Alright, so in GPS, first of all we learned about theory behind it, about how to find where the satellite is, how they orbit and all the rules. And after that, our final project was also about getting signals from some satellites, but people could actually choose their project. So, let's see. Well, labs were all in MATLAB, as you can see. This is what we actually did. So we actually worked with antennas and got the signal from the satellite, which was fun. But what was not fun is my final project. Okay, it's here. And I chose to get a signal from a GLONASS satellite because GLONASS is from Russia. Uh, I don't remember how many satellites they have now, but at the time they had 24, as you can see here. So here in Kazakhstan, the city buses have GLONASS trackers to show you in the app when the bus is going to come to the bus stop. So it was pretty interesting to learn about. I only knew about GPS before this class and we learned about all the navigation systems in the world. So my project was to get a signal and demodulate and decode it just to prove that it was not random data or random noise. But I remember I had a lot of trouble with it because my signal was a lot of noise after I decoded it. So I struggled a lot to get my signal. But I still got a good grade for some reason. <laughs> I thought they would give me a D or a C. I guess they appreciated all the work that I did because I went to the lab two times a week for a few hours. And by few, I mean four or five. And the teaching assistant was tired of me. And you see that it's also in MATLAB. So there's a lot of coding that goes into electrical and computer engineering and GPS. Okay, so that's it. That's, that's the overview of all the classes that I took as an undergrad at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And I hope this video was useful to you if you are looking into an aerospace engineering program and you want to know more about it. And obviously some classes that I took you can switch to other electives. And probably in one of the next videos I'll show you how to look for an aerospace program and how to see which classes they offer. So if you're interested in knowing about that just write a comment or hit the like button. And if you're still watching, thank you for being such a determined person. And I have no doubt that you will have a lot of success in the future in aerospace. So see you in the next video and bye!